Welcome to this video. Today we'll be looking at Pixlr. Pixlr uh, is a image browser-based image editor with a wealth of devices now available to us that allow us to capture images, whether that be our phone, our tablet, or our MP3 player. It's useful to have a range of different ways of editing those images. What I like about Pixlr particularly is that it's browser-based, which means I don't need to worry about installing it, and it's going to work on my Chromebook as well as it will work on my Mac or my PC. So having gone to pixlr.com, I can scroll down and I've got two offers available to me. I've got either Pixlr Express, which will allow me to add filters to images I've already taken, or if I want something a bit more advanced that mimics the features of, a, of more of a professional editing package and allows me to work in layers and transform objects and create composite images, then I've got Pixlr Editor. So we're gonna look at Pixlr Editor. It requires Adobe Flash Player, so if you have blocked it or it's blocked as part of your security, you'll need to allow that in order for it to open the page. Once it's loaded, you get the ability to create a new image when you can set the size, or you can open an image from your computer or from a URL. So I'm gonna open an image from my computer. And I'll click open. So we've got a number of of panels here that we can see toolbars. So we've got the navigator, which allows us to zoom in and out and to see where we are within an image. We've got the layers, which allows us to duplicate a layer to add new layers as we go. And we've got the history palette there as well. So if we make a mistake, we can jump back to where we started. So we come over to this toolbar, you can see we've got the sorts of tools that you'd expect to see. We've got a cropping tool, we've got a move tool, we've got the marquee tools, the lasso tool, magic wand tool, pencil tool, the brush tool, eraser, paint bucket, gradient, clone stamp, color replacement tool, the drawing tool, blur, and sharpen, smudge, and sponge, dodge, and burn, and some of the other tools which you can see. We've also got the text tool, and the zoom in and out, and we can change the color as well. So very quickly, if we wanted to add some text, we could choose the text tool, we could type in, we could alter the font, We could alter the size. And we could also choose the color. And you'll notice you can put in a particular hash code for the colors that you want, or you can just drag and select it from the wheel and click OK. You can alter the alignment, so we could align it centrally and click OK. Having done that, you can then use the Move tool to move the text around until you're happy with it. You see we've got a number of other options available. If we look through the menu, so we've got a filter option, so there's lots of filters that you could apply. So we could use some Gaussian blur, and we could blur the text if we chose to. So a variety of different things that you've got, all very similar to those that are available in Photoshop. Having added text, we could also, if we go back to our background image, we could add a shape and we could change the color and you can see when we choose certain tools a secondary toolbar comes here so we can change the color of the shape that we create so we create another shape and then we could use the move tools having making sure that we select the shape and we can move those around. So you get the idea. So what you've got is a really richly featured editing package with lots of professional elements that you'd find in something such as Photoshop. When you're finished, if we go to File, you've got the options to save, and you can save it as a JPEG. As a PNG, a BNP, a TIFF, or a PXD, 
What I like about PXD is that means you can save a layered image as well. So there you have it, really richly featured browser-based image editing piece of software. I hope you found that useful. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.